Oh, Canada, sing along, we stay at home for thee. Hello, I'm Cameron Bailey. I'm the artistic director and co-head at TIFF, and this is Stay at Home Cinema. Thanks for logging on and, and checking this out. Uh, tonight we're watching Bad Education, which is brand new online. This is the night that it debuts online on Crave and uh, elsewhere around the world. This is the movie with Hugh Jackman. Uh, it's a new film by Corey Finley, also stars Allison Janney and Geraldine Viswanathan, who's the uh, star we're going to be speaking with in a little bit. We're going to start watching Bad Education at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 5.30 on the West Coast. And we're going to live tweet as we watch. So please uh, join us for that. Before that, we will speak with Geraldine in a little bit. But first, some shout outs. First of all, as we always do, we want to begin by acknowledging where we are in Canada, where I am right now, and shout out all Indigenous storytellers and their communities from coast to coast to coast. We also want to thank, especially right now, all levels of government uh, who support TIFF and, and uh, just about everybody in Canada right now. Um, government of Canada, the province of Ontario, and the city of Toronto are supporters of TIFF. A uh, big shout out to all government workers who are working overtime uh, in this COVID-19 uh, situation, and also all healthcare workers and all service workers. Uh, we get a lot of help from some corporate partners as well, beginning with our lead sponsor, Bell, also RBC, L'Oreal, Paris, and Visa. And thanks also to donors and members at TIFF. If you're a donor, if you're a member, just throw a heart up right now, because uh, I want to thank you for supporting us. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and, and you keep us going. You really do. So thank you for all of that support. One last thing, this is National Volunteer Week. This is the last day of National Volunteer Week. TIFF has over 3,000 volunteers. So a big shout out to all of our volunteers at the festival and all year round at TIFF Bell Lightbox. If you're a volunteer, you know, throw some likes up as well. Let us know you're out there. Uh, we really want to thank you for uh, all you do to uh, help uh, us get the programming to our audience. Now, Bad Education is based on a true story, a true scandal that took place in Long Island, New York. Uh, it had money, sex, corruption, everything you want in a good juicy scandal. Uh, and in the movie, Hugh Jackman plays a school superintendent. Allison Janney is one of his colleagues, an administrator who's caught up pretty much in the same web. And Geraldine Viswanathan is the high school newspaper reporter who should never be underestimated. Uh, you'll recognize Geraldine from her breakout role in Blockers. Uh, she moved from Australia to pursue acting in the U.S., uh, and that was one of her first movies. Also starred last year in uh, Minho Bag's terrific drama called Hala, which we had at the festival. And last September, same festival, Bad Education made its world premiere in our special presentation, yeah, can I say that? Special presentation section at the Toronto Film Festival. Geraldine uh, was, um, uh, was there for that, and she was also one of the TIFF Rising Stars, which is uh, an initiative where we try to just really throw some, some light on some up and coming actors. And she is terrific. She can do comedy, she can do drama. I think you're going to see a lot more of her, and we're going to see if we can uh, bring her online now. Uh, and talk a little bit about bad education. Geraldine, are you there? Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me on. This is the new way to launch a movie, it seems. Oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet. Yeah. Um, what, what is this like? What is quarantine like for you? Um, it, you know, it's not bad. I can't complain. I'm... Yeah. We just had some tacos. I'm in upstate nice. New York. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty nice. We've just been uh, cooking and watching a lot of movies and TV. The Excellent. classic. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the character that you play in Bad Education, this, this high school reporter? Yeah, so I play, her name is Rachel, and she's kind of a composite of the student newspaper in the real story um so she uh gets put on this assignment to report on just uh this like not very interesting thing it's about budgets and the skywalk and uh hugh jackman's character frank Tassone ends up kind of emboldening her to um 
<laughs> I keep saying comments talking about my accent. People who freaked out that you have an Australian accent. Do they have to hear from Australia? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Um, but yeah, so she ends up uncovering that uh, that uh, Frank Tassone and Pam Glocken have been up to some shady business. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got some great scenes with a fellow Australian, and let's remind everybody, you are Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just said, is it just me or does she sound Australian? Austra yeah, no, it's not just, just you. you. Um, so you're working with Hugh Jackman in this movie. Uh, what was that like? That was, I mean, in, uh, Hugh Jackman is a god figure, I think, to everyone, especially Australians especially Australian actors. So um, that was really, I mean, completely incredible. And then he just exceeded all my expectations. He's just the greatest oh, showman. <laughs> <laughs> He's the greatest showman. He's so <laughs> um, how, how did you make that decision to leave Australia? Many actors have, of course, mm. uh, to leave Australia, to go to the US to try to, to further your career there. What was it that did it for you? Um, I, I always just knew that I wanted, that if I was going to pursue acting, that I would want to do it in the States. I just, uh, felt the most, um, I don't know. I just felt like that was where I was supposed to be. That's where mm -hmm. I would thrive and where, you know, I it just felt like a mutual <laughs> thing. Um, so when I self-taped from Sydney for Blockers, that was the thing that kind of brought me here and got me my visa. And uh, that was definitely the the turning point when I moved to to the States. Mm. You've chosen very well so far, I must say. And I know that, you know, getting cast is, is a choice that happens on both sides, but you've really found great material uh, blockers, really showing off some of your comic chops. And then uh, Hala, really a powerful lead dramatic role for you. Mm. And now this one, uh, in bad education. I know there's more coming as well. Um, how do you go about choosing what projects you are going to go up for? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really just uh, an instinctual feeling. I really um, feel very fortunate to just be able to to do projects that I genuinely love and that um, I just, when I read the script, I just, it just, everything clicks and I just, something in my body tells me that I have to do it. Um, and I am also just, I just want to keep working with people who inspire me and are so much greater than me and that can, you know, just, uh, I just want to keep being surrounded by great people and great mm -hmm. directors, especially. Yeah. The director of Bad Education is Corey Finley, who ch who made Thoroughbreds um, mm. a few years earlier, and a terrific film, has a really kind of great bite to it, very uh, acerbic kind of comedy, and, and he's got a really interesting lens on uh, some rich, privileged people, shall I say, and there's a little bit yeah. of bad, bad education as well, people behaving badly because they feel like they can. Yeah. Um, what was it that you learned from Corey Finley, and what was that experience like in terms of working with, with Corey? Corey is such a, he's such a special director. I mean, I was obsessed with Thoroughbreds and I love his style and his kind of distinct voice in filmmaking. I think it's so, um, it's so cool to, to find that, especially he's so young too. It's really mm. like, he's, yeah, <laughs> kind of, um, he's just the future. And I think, um, I guess what was most like inspiring about working with him was just how much he absolutely loves it. Like he was just calm the whole time. And even, you know, sets get so stressful and there are all kinds of things that go wrong all the time. And he was just always in this really centered, calm state and you could just tell that he no matter what was going on he was just loving it and mm. uh it was really beautiful and even when, like the, on our last day of filming i was like oh are you excited you can like finally <laughs> get a full <laughs> night's sleep and like usually directors are pretty like it's bittersweet but it's also nice to 
you know, go to bed. Um, yeah. He was like, no, I'm sad. I'm going to miss this so much. So he's just, you know, meant to do this. Mm -hmm. um, you had done stand-up comedy and also improv with a very intriguing... ...actor that maybe other standard dramatic training wouldn't. Oh, well, I think I've glitched a little bit. Did I freeze? Okay, all right. My question was about your stand-up and your uh, improv training. Ah, uh, yes. Did you hear that? I, actually, that was just a glitch on my end. Can you hear me? I I can. It's a little, little it's a little glitchy. Oh yeah, no, it's stopping and starting. Yeah, it really uh, is. All right, yeah. this seems a bit better now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I was asking about your improv and your stand-up training and how that affected your work as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, so I started doing stand-up in Sydney because um, I was just, I guess, <laughs> bored. I wasn't, I was auditioning. <laughs> Not audition. everybody who's bored goes out and gets on stage and tells jokes there. <laughs> I know, there's clearly something very wrong with me, but I, um, just wanted to like do something that felt self-sufficient and felt like I was in, um, that I was practicing something because I felt like I wasn't being given the opportunity to do any acting. So I was like, I'm just gonna try this. And then that ended up leading to meeting other comedians and ended up, yeah, joining this sketch collective called Freudian Nip. Um, and I think that that the main thing from doing, I just, it's quite empowering to, um, to just be able to create something yourself. And I think it did give me a lot of confidence because if you, if you bomb on stage, then like an audition is going to seem a lot less scary. <laughs> right. Nothing to be afraid of there. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, we've got a question from one of the TIFF members I want to ask you. It's from Ben White, who asks, did you do any research or meet any of the original school reporters from the real life incident? Yes, I met the woman who Rachel was loosely based off, um, who ended up, she ended up writing a piece for the New York Times about the whole, how it all went down. So um, I met with her in New York, which was really cool just to hear her account of the story um but but i didn't have to do the same research that like hugh and allison had to do where they were really yeah. playing a person uh-huh okay mm. um and then a couple of questions that came in on social media this is from our rag maruka on twitter uh when did you realize you wanted to be an actor um You know, unclear. I think there was, I feel like I became really um, set on pursuing it as a career when I was 15 and I did a uh, like teen workshop class in LA during a family holiday. And um, at first was really intimidated and felt so, out of my depth and very 15 it was just like oh but um but then by the end of it found uh, we the last thing we did was a comedy piece and then I did that and felt amazing and and uh, I just I think that's kind of when it it flipped for me that I could that I wanted to pursue it in my adult life <laughs> And and yeah. what is it about comedy in particular? I'm, I'm just curious. Is it like, what do you have inside you that, that kind of connects with comedy? Um, I think it's just a very, uh, like, primal, like, very just instinctual thing to want to want to laugh. I feel like you kind of time suspends and you. Mm -hmm. um, you it, it just feels like a super it just feels like magic like what mm. what makes something funny it doesn't make any sense but it's just something that 
is innate in everyone. And I think that it's, to me, it feels similar to the way that some people feel about music or something where it's just, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Freud wrote a great book about comedy, about jokes. <laughs> so back to Freud. Hello. Back to Freud. I need to um, read that right now. Yes. Jokes in their relationship to the unconscious. Um, all right. Wow. Andrew Davies also on social media has a question for you. Who are your biggest acting inspirations? Um, my biggest acting inspirations. Right now, I'm I'm so inspired by Saoirse Ronan. I think she's so yes. phenomenal in everything she does, and like, uh, yeah, I just think that she's an incredible. She's like the next Meryl, you know. She's mm -hmm. so she's just flawless. Um, so she's someone that recently I've been like. <laughs> consistently mind blown yeah definitely um there is a movement i'm told online um to get you to play kamala khan ms marvel uh <laughs> where is that campaign right now and what can we do to help <laughs> oh my gosh i i haven't checked in on that one um it's you know it's um it's a tricky one though. I think it's, I think the fan casting thing has been a little divided on, on me playing Kamala Khan because she's such an, uh, a, a strong figure in the Pakistani Muslim community and I'm neither of those things. So I, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's interesting, but I feel very, um, I mean, she's my favorite superhero by far and I love those comics i've read most of them and i um am very flattered that people would take to the internet to <laughs> to say that thing it's pretty cool <laughs> well that's good uh we will see how that goes then mm. um the the last thing i want to ask you before you go and, and by the way fans are asking you just to say hello just to give them a shout out in, in these messages here so can you say hello to your fans hello people thanks for watching that's so nice <laughs> yes i'm scrolling yeah, up a lot of fans out there um and uh and actually if people if, if tell us where you're from as well i'm always just curious where people are from where you're you're um you're logging on from as well uh but the last thing i wanted to ask you was you've got a canadian american co-production coming up so we're curious about that of course it's called the broken heart gallery yes. what can you tell us about that um broken heart gallery we filmed it in toronto last summer and it was just the most fun ever it's um it's a romantic comedy. Natalie Krinsky, uh, who wrote it, who <laughs> wrote it, wrote on Gossip Girl and um, many other great things. Uh, she's the writer director, and uh, it's a really, it's a really special cast. We've got Dacre Montgomery. We have Bernadette Peters. Bernadette um, Peters, wow. Yeah, right. it it was wild it just felt like we, we were at a dinner party and every week we had these like fun new dinner party guests <laughs> um but yeah it's gonna be really fun we don't know where it will live yet but hopefully it'll be out soon okay that's great uh well listen thank you for taking the time um we're gonna start watching uh, bad education at 8 30 p.m. on the east coast that's 5 30 on the west coast across canada we're watching on crave it's also on hbo in the u.s it might be elsewhere in the world if you can find it and you're not in canada just track it down wherever you can great movie geraldine thank you so much for doing this and thanks for bringing these incredible movies to us and i hope to get to see you at the toronto film festival another time thank you so much yes me too i All had right. so much fun Can't okay wait. take care you too take care everyone okay.